Hello, and welcome back to another Dark Table editing video. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but uh, so I may be a little rusty, but at making a video that is. But uh, anyway, hope you find this useful. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, I, I have changed desktops and distribution again. Uh, it's been a while since I've ran KDE, but uh, that's what this is, is Fedora KDE spin. But um, <clears throat> I recently picked up a machine, uh, well, a number of months ago now, I picked up a machine with, with a high DPI display, and I just like the way KDE supports that. So uh, I just went with it on everything um, for consistency's sake. So that's what you see here. Um, this is Darktable 2.4 that just came out not very long ago. Um, and we have this photo I took here with my little Fuji film. Um, and even though I had the exposure compensation turned up a little bit, uh, you can see it didn't compensate very well for it. Um, and these bright scenes with a lot of white in them, uh, the camera's meter is just trying to make everything 18% gray. So it underexposes severely. And you can see the snow here looks kind of icky. Uh, for lack of a better word, and gray and dingy. Um, so we're going to fix that. Um, and you can see that here in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the histogram. So your right hand side is your highlights, your left hand side is your shadows. Uh, if you have your, if you have your hump, your, your, your histogram, your pile of data here, bump against either one of these edges you are clipping. Um, in fact, you can cut on the clipping warnings here by clicking this uh, down here, this this uh, half colored in uh, square icon. And now if we were to run the exposure way up, you see how it turns red and the histogram uh, is going off to one side there. That means that that's overexposed. So I'm going to compensate for the lack of exposure here a little bit. Um, just by turning this up until we get close to that edge, you can see the blues here starting to get a little overexposed. Um, this looks pretty good. We have a few little red areas here on this roof. I'm not too concerned about that. I'll make an artistic decision to, uh, to, to keep that. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave that. The other side of this is when you run up the exposure, you also um, wash out your darker areas, as you can see here on the left-hand side, our, our blacks are, are more gray. So the way I do this, um, I like to have my images a little bit of color and kick. I like to have deep, dark blacks and, 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 and uh, contrast, so I'm going to go ahead here on the black slider and just, I'm just using my mouse wheel here. I'm just gonna creep that up a little bit until you see we're getting a little bit of the the, the, the asphalt surface here is, is getting black or getting some shadow clipping here in these bushes. Uh, maybe back that off a hair. Uh, there you go, that's, that's a little, that's better. You can see as we continue to add contrast in this, this histogram, instead of being bunched up tight together, it kind of spreads out like that which is uh, what we want. <clears throat> Next stop I'll make, I'm making an image like this. Uh, snow scenes tend to be rather monotone, so I usually come in here and just crank on the uh, saturation slider here and I'll give it a little bit more contrast. Eh, maybe not quite that much. Uh, just give it a little more saturation and contrast to make the colors pop, to make things look really, uh, uh, you know, to make the color that is there really shine. Uh, you got this blue in this car, you got this red in this brick, uh, this yellow stripe on the road. This is literally just the beginning of a snowstorm. I went out and took a shot. So um, it's, you know, it makes the color that's there all that much more there. Um, next thing, this camera tends to skew a little cool. Uh, so I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. Uh, we're just holding my mouse cursor over the temperature slider and scrolling my mouse wheel up. You can also grab it. Uh, it's a little much. Maybe bring it back down a little. Uh, fine tune it here. Yeah, somewhere in there. It's just a little bit warmer. Um, just just makes it look a little bit better, I think. Um, uh, 5300 is a little cool for that, for my eye. Uh, this is a calibrated screen. Um, again, <clears throat> I'm not going for super color accuracy here. I, you know, this type of shot, I'm not going to get out the color checker or my calibration or any other calibration target. Um, I'm just going to do it to what it looks good to my eye uh, on the screen. Uh, you know, this is a decent calibrated screen. 
Um, but you know, I'm not too worried about exact color reproduction. Um, you know, that's just my take. Uh, next I'm going to come in here in the corrections and kind of play with the lens correction. Sometimes I cut it on, sometimes I cut it off. Um, I actually like it off for this particular image. I like the little bit of a vignette there, the natural vignette. Um, I think I'm going to leave it off. Uh, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, again, a lot of this is to taste, so in particular images, um, your particular images may look better a different way. So um, this is just how I do it. <clears throat> the next thing I like to do, excuse me, <clears throat> a little frog in the throat, tone curve. Um, you see here, it's off, it's kind of flat, um, not very, not very good looking here, but if we can take it, it just kind of... Yeah, just a little. Bring it just just a slight S curve. You don't have to get crazy with it. We don't want to get a crazy amount of contrast, but just enough. Well, keep an eye on that histogram. You see how it's moving around. Um, maybe even there you go. All right, now you see how that just that just uh, brings things out a little bit more. Uh, I might bring it up a little less. Let's see. There we go. That might be a little much. I'm just, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Be careful with your clicks there. Um, just bring it, just just a slight, slight curve in it there. There we go. And in fact, I may go back here and add a little bit more contrast saturation. I mean, just to compensate for that, because that does suck the contrast. You can tell here that this tone curve does knock some of the um, color out of the image, but it does add a little bit extra pop. I am clipping a little bit more here on this roof, but I'm not. That's such a small amount. I'm not really that worried about it. And the trade-off is, you know, I get more uh, stuff down in here visible that you can see. I'm okay with that. Uh, again, you know, just because you're clipping a little doesn't make it a bad image. Um, but there you have it. Quick, like, five-minute adjustments, and we have gone from this to this, um, which is much more presentable. Uh, it's going to look better on a thumbnail, and, you know. It's a much better-looking image than just, you know, this kind of gray, dingy thing we got out of the camera. Um, anyway, so it's a quick five minute how to adjust your uh, snow images and in, 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 uh, snowstorm winter images in Darktable. You could probably use this same sort of techniques in like Lightroom or On One or whatever, uh, you know, histogram as a histogram. Um, the same, I'm using Darktable on Linux here, but this same set of adjustments will work uh, dark table on Mac, dark table on Windows now, strangely enough, uh, you know, wherever it'll run. So, uh, again, these are kind of generic, but, uh, you know, I want to get the uh, views, so I'm going to put dark table in the title because that's what people search on, right? So, uh, anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, it was free. What do you want? <laughs> so, um, just uh, and consider it. Uh, you know, five minutes of your life, you won't get back, whatever. <laughs> but uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.